All right, we just looked at a sigma bond. Now I want to introduce you to pi bond. And to do that, let's look at um, another simple molecule, and that will be CH2, oops, CH2, CH2. Okay, just a simple double bond carbon. And the name of this is ethene. Not ethane, but ethene. Um, ethane would be CH3 single bond CH3, but this has a double bond, and so we hear that in its name, E-T-H-E-N-E. -E. Now, um, what does this look like? Um, we have a carbon, we have a double bond to another carbon, and the two hydrogens are looking like so, because each of these carbons is what hybridization state? Remember in methane, in methane it was sp3, but here each carbon, they're both the same, each carbon has one, two, three effective electron groups, and so each carbon is sp2 hybridized. You can't see that, there we go. Each one is sp2 hybridized, this one and this one. And so that means that each carbon has um, an sp2 hybrid orbital pointing in this direction, this direction, and this direction, okay, giving me that trigonal planar 120 degree bond angle um, geometry. So I, I don't want to complicate this drawing by adding all of that in, but I'm just reminding you of that. So sp2, very important. And the hydrogens, of course, are just using their 1s orbital to overlap with that sp2 to form the bond. And this carbon as well, squiggly line here, so you don't see it as structure, is also sp2 hybridized. They are the same. So now I want to describe completely the bonding between these two carbon atoms. I can see that, just for example, the bonding here, this is a single bond, and so this is a sigma bond. And the sigma bond here is a direct overlap between the sp2 orbital on the carbon and the 1s orbital on the hydrogen. And that's the same sigma bond that is in place here and here and here. And we went over the sigmas in the last video. So let's take a closer look now at this double bond. So this is a double, a double bond. And a double bond has two parts. Whereas a single bond is a sigma bond, a double bond is made up of one sigma and one pi. It's made up of one sigma and one pi. Anytime you see a double bond, so these two lines, you know that one of the lines represents a sigma bond and the other represents a pi bond. Let's describe the sigma bond completely between these two carbons. Well, it is the double bond, okay? The double bond is made up of a sigma and a pi. But if I want to describe the sigma bond, the sigma bond is a direct overlap between, between what on this carbon and what on this carbon. They're the same. So it's between the sp2 on C1, let's call this guy C1 and this guy C2, and the sp2 on carbon 2. That's what it is. Now the pi bond is something a little more special. And I have to take you back to uh, let's a little aside here. Let's move over here and just do a little aside work. Remember when we were talking about hybridization states in general, 
and we said, look, the carbon has um, S's or S orbital and P orbitals. And in order to make, in this case, an sp2, it is using one of the s and two of the b's to make um, hybrid orbitals, one, two, three. Each of those are called an sp2. And we didn't pay any attention to what was not used, what was left over fact is that there is a p orbital left over, okay? And so the sp2 hybrid orbitals that are here are centered on this carbon. And I'm just going to redraw that down here. So this carbon has an sp2 in this direction, and an sp2 in this direction, and an sp2 on the bond axis with the other carbon. Okay, so that's like 120 degrees, this, these bond angles, right? Because that's my trigonal planar geometry. And if you want, we can draw in the 1s of the hydrogen, right? And there's my sigma bond for my overlap. Now, um, the other carbon atom, let's draw it in. The other carbon atom is here, and it has also an sp2 hybridization state. So it has, I need to draw this about the same size, and I've not done that very well. So rather than start over my video, I will just start over my drawing. This is sort of like live TV. Okay, here we go. Okay, good. And there's my carbon. And I've got another one this way and another one this way. And again, these are my two hydrogens. And there's my sigma bond overlap between the 1s on the H and the sp2 on the carbon. Okay. So here's my overlap here. There's the sigma part of this um, double bond. And so it is an overlap, as we said, slide it over to what we said, a direct overlap between sp2 on C1 and sp2 on C2. So you see why it's called a direct overlap? I'll just use my, my pens as an example here. And actually, we'll use them that are the same. And so here are my my two um, sp uh, hybrid orbitals, and these are the direct overlap in this way. So do you see why you can only ever have one sigma bond? Because once you direct, have this direct overlap, this head-on collision, there's, this, there's no other space here for more orbitals to um, directly overlap. So um, I have these here, so where does the pi overlap? How can that actually overlap? And the way the, the pi overlaps is, remember that leftover p orbital that was up here? Well, there's a leftover p orbital on this guy and this guy. And this is the x-axis, but that leftover p, let's put it in the y-axis. So I have a leftover p in the y-axis and a leftover p in the y-axis. So these guys can interact indirectly, you see? So whereas they cannot overlap directly, because that was the x, I have a py and a py that can, that can interact. And we say that this pi bond has um, interaction above and below the sigma. So I have the leftover P on this carbon and the leftover P on this carbon forming the pi bond. So again, here is my sigma direct overlap, and here is my pi bond indirect overlap above and below the bond axis. Okay, so let's draw this in a little bit better. Let me keep with the green. 
and draw in back on my carbon. So we've really exaggerated the bond distance here just so that we can draw everything without crowding. But my leftover p orbital, this one right here, is I'm going to draw it. Remember p's are my figure eight, so I'll draw it here. And I have a leftover py here. Um, it could have also been a, left, a pz and a pz, in which case it would be like it would be this and, and this, but I like the Y because it's better on my two-dimensional limit of the paper here to demonstrate. And so this is why the pi bonds have an indirect overlap, because I can see I'm not overlapping lobes. They're just aligned with each other. Okay, they're in the, the same plane. So um, that's, that's our depiction of a pi bond. So back to the actual description to complete it. Um, so uh, whereas the sigma was direct, when you write a pi, it is indirect. Part of your complete description. So a pi bond is an indirect overlap. Now I know the word overlap sounds almost misused here, but remember it's qualified with indirect. An indirect overlap, again between uh, two things, and these two things are you're going to have an atomic orbital on one of your atoms and an atomic orbital on the other atom. So the same sort of format as describing a sigma bond. However, when you describe a pi bond, you will never use a hybrid orbital because hybrids are made so as to create that direct uh, bonding, uh, directional bonding, and a, and a direct overlap or a sigma bond. So whereas hybrid orbitals are used in the sigma bonds, only p's are used in a pi. And I think that's easy to remember given the, the, the letters used for its symbol. And so it is not just a, a two P on carbon number one, but specifically the 2PY, okay, to demonstrate that you understand they have to be in the same axis to have that alignment for indirect overlap. So I couldn't say a 2PY on this carbon and a 2PZ on this one because I'd be lined up sort of in this axis and this one, that wouldn't work. So either a 2PZ and a 2PZ, or a 2PY and a 2PY. And by convention, I don't say X and X because the X-axis is used by the hybrids. Okay, so that is the description of a double bond, broken down into the description of its component sigma and pi. And that is what it looks like. Um, and that's a throwback to our hybridization, which ha helps with your rationale, I hope. And we'll continue.